Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So many of y'all really like the script editor video that I put out. Um, it was just a basic, basic script editor video that um, went into how you can start using the script editor in ClickSense and build a dashboard using that. And it just opens up a whole new world. Uh, and if you want to be a real developer in ClickSense, I'm sure you've realized by now that the real power of ClickSense lies in the script editor. So um, today we're going to look at three different functions. Um, super simple again, maybe if you're an advanced user or intermediate even, uh, you probably know all of this. Um, but there are a lot of people who would like to learn uh, things like this. So this is a beginner's video. So the three things we're going to look at. Conditional loading. Uh, we're going to look at joins. And then we're also going to look at mapping which is a super, super important um, function, I think. So let's get started. If you're interested, stick around. So I would really appreciate it if you guys left a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And we're gonna do much more uh, in-depth videos on script editors, a little more into Tableau as well. And we're gonna like compare and build similar dashboards in both Tableau and ClickSense, just, just, just for the heck of it, why not? Uh, I love both the softwares. Um, all right, so first things first, let's do a conditional load. So I have my load script here. Um, I'll leave the link below if you wanna download it, use it yourself. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm loading a table called customers and these are the fields that I'm loading. Um, and if you want, So we can go to data files, we can go to our file here and we can say customers field. And this is the one that I'm loading. So insert script, right? This is the one, um, let's just, and I've given it a name as customers. So how can we do a conditional load? So let's say that you don't really want to load every single file from, um, from this particular data source, you don't want every single data here, except you want to make some kind of conditional statements. So all you need to do is you're gonna say, load customers in, into a table called customers, load these particular fields from this particular file, but you wanna give it some exceptions. So the exceptions here would always start with where. So what you're gonna do is type where and then give some kind of condition. So let's say, for example, you only want to load customers from a particular country. So what you're going to say is where country is equal to, let's say, Germany. You see that there is no issues here. There's no exclamation mark, which means that this one should work. Of course, there are many other ways you could say the same thing, whereas you could also say um, another way to write this would be, you could also say, and if you want to add additional conditional statements, you type in an and. So the, and this exact same way of getting only Germany here would be to also write, uh, you could use like, which is a function. Also, you could use match. So you could say where match field name would be country where match country as germany and we take the first thing off um let's say we want to add another condition and match let's say we want city and city berlin all right, so the way to do conditional load is to add a where statement. And if you want to add extra, you can you can add an and. So now it's only going to load customers here where country matches Germany and city matches Berlin. So let's just see what happens with this one. Of course, what this is going to mean is that many of the customer IDs are not going to match. So it's going to have a null value in our dimension set, but that's okay. Right, so our was loaded now let's go here and if you see 
that the only country that's been loaded in is Germany because there is no it's all null here and if I click on Germany the only city that actually exists is now Berlin um, so if we go into our data model and just look at the data a little bit we made our changes in customer and now I want to preview it the only one is Germany this is the only unique um, customer here all right um, so that's how you do conditional loading all right now I, um, to be honest let's have all the data here um, next what we can do is let's do a join so now we have products and we have product name um, but instead of having a different um, having two different tables here so you can see that product ID and we have orders here what I want to do is just join this particular table directly to my orders okay so how do we do that we could do use a join so first let's load the table that we want to join it to that is our orders table so I've written what is orders next is our products table so let's put it after this and now we don't want to actually load the products into its own table here instead what we want to do is we want to join it to orders and we want to join it using product ID so here what I'm going to do is take away the table name instead I'm just going to say join and I'm going to open this and I'm going to say join it to the tables called orders because this is the orders table and I'm going to load this so basically what's going to happen is for every order it's going to look at the product ID and if the product ID matches in the next load that we're doing then it's going to connect it's going to join our product category name now these are a bit too much so let's just do this and maybe add category name and remove the comma in the last one so now if this is also highlighted yeah so now when you load the orders table it's going to join the next load to the same table here and it's going to do it so basically click is going to look at uh -huh, this product id exists here and here so that's the key so it's going to connect these two tables so technically what should happen is this table should disappear and these two categories that i'm trying to join using product id is going to combine here so let's load it and see if it works now of course you can use left join if you're using orders as the main one uh, if you only want to keep the orders um, where a product here exists then you can do a right join so um, there are plenty of different kinds of joins that can be used I think you should google it and know which one um, is the right join to use for you uh, in this case I've used join you could use left join right join and that would just be this way so in this case since I'm doing a left join it's going to keep all the things on the left let's have a look let's go here your products table has disappeared and instead if you look at your main orders table that you wanted to join it to you have two new categories here which says product and category name and that's what that's exactly what you did you see here you see for every product ID now you have joined the product and the category name so that's how you use a join um, super important I think especially in your ETL functions you're going to join multiple different uh, data sources and um, it's I think one of the most used one however there is another function just like join which should, which does somewhat similar uh, function which I happen to use quite quite often to be honest um, and that is called the mapping function so let's say now we have employees here we have employee ID we have last name first name 
let's say we don't really want to have this as another table. We can actually combine this table right here. And how could you do that? Well, you could use a join just like we did now. But there's another way that you could do it. That is by using something called the mapping function. So what you can do basically is you can create a table, a temporary table, which loads all the employee IDs and their names. And then you do a mapping function saying that, hey, just map if any of the employee IDs are matching here, instead of the employee ID, match their names and um, their names directly into this table, right? So let me show you how that works. So if I want to map, I have the information here, employee ID, last name, first name. I want to map it to this particular table. Um, for that, first I need to have the mapping table before the orders load. So always before you before you do an apply map, you need to have you need to first create the mapping table and that should be done before. So step one, let's cancel this one uh, from here and let's actually load it before this and we're going to take away the name and we're going to say we're going to give this table a particular name, something that we can remember. So let's say mapping employee ID to names. All right. And instead of a regular load, we're going to do a mapping load. So we're going to say mapping load. Now here's the thing about mapping loads. You can only have two functions. For example, you need a key that you're going to map it to, and then you need what is that function that you're going to map. So in this case, we need to take all of this away and we can only have two things. So employee ID, last name. So I'm going to combine both of these into one. So let's say last name plus, I'm going to say last name and I want a comma with the space and first first name. So now what it's going to do is it's going to combine the two fields into one. Since in the mapping, I can't really map two different fields. I can only map one field. So I'm going to give it a name called as employee name. So now I've created a mapping table with employee ID and their name. If you want to just use one function, you could just use one saying employee ID and last name or employee ID and first name or any other fields that you want, but just make sure that you just have one. And next, what, are, what we're going to do is once this thing is loaded, we want to apply that map. Okay. So I'm going to copy this, the name of the mapping field. And then I'm going to say here, where do you want to apply it to? We want to apply it here, right? To your employee key. So I'm going to press enter here and I'm going to say apply map. And which map do you want to apply? And this would be the name of the mapping table that you have just created. So I'm going to apply the name. Where do you want to apply that map to? So basically what I want is I want it to look at employee ID and if there is the same employee ID in the mapping table, then we have mapped the employee name to that ID. So I wanted to apply, bring in the name for that ID. And in this particular table, employee ID is called employee key. So I'm going to use that. So employee key, because we have renamed it as employee ID here, but the original name is employee key. So I'm going to take employee key here. And if it doesn't match, I'm going to tell it, no, just leave it as a null there if in case it doesn't match. And I'm going to give it a name saying as employee name. 
and a comma so that the rest of them are here. Okay, I hope that was clear. So we're loading a mapping table with employee IDs and we're just creating their full names by putting in last name and a comma and first name as employee name. And then in the orders, I'm saying apply this particular map. What is the name of the map? Copy the name of the table, the mapping table, and then apply it to the name of the field here, which is the employee ID. But we are, the employee ID is called employee key. So I'm mapping it to employee key. And then I'm saying if it doesn't match anything, then just bring it as a null. And I'm closing the bracket here and I'm giving as employee name. So here basically what should happen is these two fields will get combined into one field and it's going to create a mapping table here and it's not going to create a different table called employees instead it's going to create a map temporary mapping table and i've said apply map to the orders table here and it's going to employ it uh, apply it to employee id here which is called employee key so let's see if that works So now when we look at our data model, you see employee employees table has disappeared. And now we just have three. And if you look at this table here, now we have employee name that's been added. And the way the employee name has been added is exactly how we said we wanted last name with the comma space first name. And that's what we have here. And we have combined it in this place uh, into one particular table. Now we could use you, we could have used join here, but I wanted to show you how mapping function works. So this is super, super, super important in case you just have one field uh, and mapping mapping is actually quite fast. Um, in a lot of situations, it's much faster than joins as well. So using mappings is super, super important. Um, I hope that it, I hope that you understood how to do it. And um, if you have any questions, please write down below and I'm gonna have a link to this particular file. Please leave a like, super appreciate it, and subscribe for more. See you in the next one. Cheers.